Uh, my name's Rick, uh, Rick Cardwell. Uh, I have a counselling practice and I specialise in couples and relationships. So what this is all about is I get a lot of questions asked um, on Facebook, either through posts and um, through private messages, basically asking questions about relationships. And, and what I will do is I will answer those questions uh, if you're putting it on a post, then I'm going to put that on the post. So be careful. Obviously, your name's there. Be careful what you put. And if you private message me, I'll answer you back through the private message. And obviously, that is a lot more private. Not other people will see that. But I'll always try and get back to you and always try and give you the answer that you want. So thank you very much for that. So this is um, a post that was placed yesterday. I put something on about marriage and um, just kind of summarise it. Um, it was um, a, 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 a couple or relationship reasonably happy. But one of the um, issues, I guess, if that's the right word to use, is that they weren't married and, and they had a good relationship with good communication. Um, but, but the lady of the relationship, you know, liked the idea of marriage but the the partner suggested that you know there was no need to be married because um you can it's just a bit of paper for want of a better word so this was not creating problems i guess within the relationship the relationship seems to be uh, uh, uh okay um so I, I i wanted to put this here just to kind of give people information really about what marriage is and I'm going to go to the traditional values and what relationships are. Now, listen, I know that there is every single opinion and attitude and everything's out there about marriage relationships. What people think, is it good? Is it bad? Does it work? Is it rubbish? Should it be banned? Should everybody? I know it's all out there. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to offer an opinion or to say it's good or say it's bad. But I just want to present to you kind of to, to to let you think about this about not just about what marriage is but how it affects the way that we think and feel about ourselves and about our values in the world so i, I hope that comes across and i hope you're able to understand that so when we think about um marriage or relationships you know people do say marriage is just a piece of paper it could be a very expensive event uh, for what okay good point so this is very complex and i'm going to try to explain this as best as i can but before we get into the sort of uh, concept and principles of marriage we just need to have a, a very quick basic understanding about you and about me as human beings and 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 some of the one of the basic principles of, of what we're like as human beings and why we're like that so you'll be aware as i'm aware that we've survived for thousands or millions of years because our brain is designed to keep us safe so that we can survive and procreate it works really well we've done that for millions of years we're here we're hoping to procreate survive for the next million of years and that's what our brain's primary function is is to keep us safe and to help us keep the species rolling on so that survival instinct in our brain is one of the oldest um, mechanisms that the brain has it's in the oldest and deepest parts of our developed brain and it's a primary reason for the way that we think about everything and, and that's grounded in fear we have to have that fear that we're afraid of everything and, until we know it's safe and so the brain develops in a way that gives us structures to stay safe and to survive so just putting that aside for a moment uh, as individual people we are infinitely different as individuals to anybody else on the planet nobody like me nobody like you infinitely different and when you put two of those infinitely different people together in an intimate relationship you've got an even more complex problem because you've got 
two infinitely different people with different backgrounds, with different presuppositions, with different experiences, traumas, created habits, all of those things that make us the person that we are today come together and just cause confusion. So two people coming together is very, very difficult and it's problematic. So when you think about relationships and two people sharing a life, what then do we believe to be true for, for marriage? Why do people feel that it's important to be married? Well, some people don't. Some people couldn't care less. <coughs> some people do. And again, there's every opinion out there on marriage. And, you know, it's not for me to, to say why that is with people. But, you know, we respect people's views. But it seems that marriage is still important to people and people feel that they should be married. And again, the way that we, why we feel like that is based on how we've been brought up, what our experiences are through life, how was our parenting styles, what our experiences are with other people, how secure we feel, what our traumas have been, and what our created habits are. So there's all these things that go into us as individual human beings that help us to formulate the idea of about relationships and the relationships that we have. So I guess the question is, why should I consider marriage when living together is just the same? Okay. And what I kind of want to hope to touch on, and I hope you'll get this, this is that I want you to understand how the mind, how the brain perceives this, because we think something which creates an emotion and that creates a behavior. So what we think is very important because the thinking ultimately is responsible for our behavior within relationships. So very, very familiar with the phrase, it is just a piece of paper, <laughs> often a very expensive piece of paper. And you can say that you can have the same relationship with a person without the confines of marriage. And, and when you look at two people together, perhaps with children, if you don't know them, you wouldn't necessarily know that they were just married or living together. You would just see them as a couple living together without that necessarily understanding whether or not they're married or not. And we tend to kind of see them as the same. But there's some really um, interesting statistics that kind of made me think a little bit more about this. And, and the national statistics for the United Kingdom, the, the official UK Gov statistics, show that about 45% of married couples... Uh, will end up divorced. So not quite half, but that that's a lot of divorces, about 45%. And when you look at unmarried couples, that statistic goes up to 70%. So that's like quite a big difference between married and unmarried. 25% different is a big lump of people or a large percentage to correlate for looking at, at that sort of figure really so it turns out that that relationships are, are really really useless it's useful useless don't worry about sort of freudian slip they're not useless at all they're very very useful it's kind of like um two ropes when you get two ropes that entwine together you get two people that come together and that makes a relationship stronger and of course two people working together is really really great because you know, you have to navigate your way through life together and life is treacherous, it's chaotic, it throws a lot of problems at you. But when you've got two brains that work together and two people that work together, then that's really, really helpful when things get complicated. So what I kind of want to have a look at to make you think is at what marriage is supposed to mean. OK, so. We all know that marriage is a, a long-standing tradition that goes back as long as we can remember. And what I'm going to talk about here, you know, because we're all going to have opinions and views on this and ideas, 
I'm going to talk about the utopian idea of marriage, the ideal view that I'm going to outline because that is marriage, the tradition of marriage. So so just bear with me and hear me through and hopefully you'll you'll see the connection with what I'm trying to say, looking at what marriage is traditionally and how we think and feel about that now when it comes to the connection that we have with, with relationships. So we know that marriage is a vow. It's a pro, it's a promise, and, and, and a vow is more than a promise. If you look at the meaning of a vow, it's much much deeper than that. Uh, and a vow is something that you would state publicly, which is why we have a wedding with our family and friends there. And it's a sacrament, usually or often, traditionally done in uh, a religious format and blessed by God. So it's stamped by the state. You, you get a, a marriage. Uh, certificate and you, you, you're blessed within the sacrament of holy marriage and some people would kind of say well so what that doesn't mean anything anymore and we can live our lives together do the same things without a marriage certificate without that sacrament and nothing is any different and that's sort of because marriage has been devalued by culture and that raises the question really is well why did we ever start marriage in the first place why did we ever start doing marriage well marriage traditionally it's that vow and it's that commitment that builds um solidity and union into a marriage uh, and that's the principle of marriage really it's kind of like voluntary enslavement with the adoption of responsibility and that responsibility is passed on to the husband in marriage when the father gives the daughter away in the marriage ceremony so so let's just have a look at this okay we've got two people that are in love who are coming together to be married to join together to move on in a relationship together with all the hopes and dreams of the future so the father gives the wife or the the, the, the bride away, the, the, the wife to be. So the father is generally, again, in, in a utopian world or a, you know, a, a normal concept, the father of the daughter, he's, he's brought this daughter into the world and he's, had, he's brought her up from being a tiny baby and watched her grow into being that woman that he's now giving away. Now, he will have done necessarily everything he possibly could to ensure that she has been unconditionally loved, kept safe, respected, cared for, particularly when she's been sick and she's been given values. And the father will have worked hard for all of her life to provide food, shelter, material goods all in the pursuit of the best life and happiness that he could possibly provide for that daughter he's done what he believes is best for that daughter because that's been his responsibility so what he is saying in the act of giving his cherished daughter away to a husband is I have done all of these things for my daughter. This is now your responsibility to take charge and to provide for her with the best life that you can. This is now your responsibility. And I am giving my daughter away because I expect that of you. It's now your responsibility. And this is part of the marriage ceremony. It's a commitment and the marriage will go through the vows uh, to love, honour, cherish, etc. And the vow always ends in till death us do part. Now, that's the ideal. That's the ideal of the marriage that we make promises that we're going to fulfil these promises till death us do part. So what each individual is consciously saying I guess is I know that you 
are trouble. And I know that you are hard work and we are incredibly different. But I am too. But now we've made this vow, we don't leave. No matter what happens, we stick together and we work it out. That's basically what that vow is all about. That's a vow. You make it publicly and you declare it in front of friends and family because of the depth of the value of the vow. And it's like saying, you know, it's it's like saying, well, I'm going to handcuff myself to you and you're going to handcuff yourself to me. And then we're going to tell each other the truth for the rest of our lives. And neither of us is going to be able to run away. Once we know the truth, we're going to live together either in mutual torment or we're going to deal with that truth, straighten ourselves out jointly and make this work. And what that does, guys, is that puts a big frame around the relationship so you know and you have guidelines what you are going to have to work out for the rest of your life to make that relationship work now that is a tough ask but that's what you buy into that's what marriage is all about it's about saying i am no longer one person we are two people together working as one and we're going to work this out together and those vows those that that union that 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 will make the, the relationship strong resilient and wiser and it means that together you can you can fight off all the snakes and the dragons that that want to tear you apart and that will come into your life to tear you apart the financial problems that we get the emotional problems that we get the work problems that we get if you're prepared to tie yourselves together and bond yourself together to the limit of those vows then you will work things out a lot better as a team and i, I found that in my clinical practice that, that the key to all of this and the the, the the difficult part but but the key to it all is is telling the truth to tell the truth about yourself to somebody that that you can trust because telling the truth to anybody is is very very difficult and i know this through my experience of life as, as we all do telling the truth is difficult because there's a lot of things about us that is that is really horrible that's really weak it's terrible and, and we see ourselves as reprehensible and shameful and, and we can all experience these emotions and telling the truth often highlights these things and it makes telling the truth kind of really difficult really but the truth has to be brought out into the open and dealt with and you're not going to tell someone the truth who's going to run away screaming when you reveal who you are so no successful marriage or no marriage is going to be successful without telling that truth and that that's a big factor and a difficult factor to understand but marriage and marriage is is a, is a great inhibitor of impulse it, it keeps chaos in check because we need structure we need to insulate ourselves from urges and we need to sometimes we need to lock ourselves away because we don't trust ourselves and marriage is the psychological point of commitment of your life to another person and um, the, when we think about the way the brain the analytical brain functions uh, and the consciousness of the brain as, as well as kind of elements of the subconscious i mean these are really deep issues that that the analytical brain of the, of the subconscious brain fully understands Th these are valuable issues because what we've just talked about helps to keep us safe and helps us to procreate that helps us to survive in a way that our minds like to function to know that we're safe or as safe as we can be to know that we're able to move into the future and there's some kind of security there and some commitment to another person who is our best friend who is the person that we can rely on 
And these substructures are there to give us the best possible chance of survival and to make things work. So I guess you can then say, well, why is that any different to just living together? Why can't we just have all that without making the vows, without having the things that we do through marriage and just live together and do that? So it's kind of like this. And I'm thinking of this more of a, a kind of a cognitive sort of process, really, in that... Um, if, you, uh, if you're living in a relationship, you enter into a relationship and there's no structure within that relationship, there's no boundaries, then you're kind of making up some of the rules yourself. You know what's right for the relationship, um, but the rules are based on us as human beings being flawed and failed and we can kind of pick up the bits of the relationship that, that suit us best, that, that we want to pick up. And the bits of the relationships that we don't value or we don't really want to face, we don't want to bother with, then we can kind of leave those to one side. We don't have to commit ourselves to that because there's no guidelines. We can leave everything fuzzy around the edges. We don't have to have specific targets so that if we don't hit that specific target we don't feel like we've failed and there's been no commitment to do this and so the mind always has the option of escape now if your mind has the option of escape then it will always be difficult to face the fear of telling the truth and solving problems because it's a bit kind of like Homer Simpson. He'll just go, woo, and he's off. He won't face those problems because he doesn't have a framework. He doesn't have to tell the truth and he doesn't have to solve the problems. So people are afraid to confront the real problems in their lives because they don't have that framework and they have the option of getting out. So when it comes to marriage and what we talked about, that, that vow and that commitment to marriage, it isn't just something that you could just take or leave. It's a commitment of responsibility to live your life in a structured and disciplined way and satisfy the deep subconscious, I guess, desires that we have to be safe and happily happy and emotionally more stable. So I think there are two aspects to marriage, the practical side, the relationship, if you like, which you could argue that is the same as just doing everything the same without that piece of paper. So, you know, your behaviours are the same, but you don't have that piece of paper. And then there's the cognitive aspect where our brains strive for security and intimacy from a, a deeply embedded need for trust and commitment which we all believe i think that we all believe is best for us and i think that there's a fundamental difference which between marriage and non-marriage i guess that non-marriage relationships and are don't have those boundaries they tend to be woollier they tend to be less disciplined and less focused on what is right for each individual and i think that's the reason why more non-marriages end up in separation than marriages purely because of that the way that we think that causes us to feel and behave and i think if you don't think that 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 is the best idea for you and for your relationship, then you should think about your options. If you think about your options of not having a structured, planned, goal orientated, good communication, truthful relationship with somebody that you are one with, then what are your options? Because that can make the relationship very very difficult very tricky and very woolly and very fluffy 
and directionless, I guess, and bringing in security, devaluing the relationships as culture has done over the probably since the the sixties, I guess, and uh, all the things that's gone on in society. And um, you know, if, I think a good measure of this, if you were to go and speak to, I don't know, twenty or thirty. 60 year old men for example about how life has mapped out for them and how their relationships have been i think you'd get a really good idea of uh the value of relationships through marriage and through the sanctity of the vows of what we said so i really hope that that makes sense that when you think about marriage and relationships there's a clear distinction with how we feel and what goes on in our mind because we're conditioned to strive and search for the things that keep us safe. And all of the things that marriage does, if we do it correctly, and that's another video, that's, to, that's, that's for another time. If we can strive to do all those things properly, and embed those into the relationship as best we can, as useless as we are and as different as we are, then I think you're giving yourself every opportunity to not only survive the chaos of life uh, in a relationship, but I also think that you bring in yourself huge um, reward through responsibility and commitment for, you, for yourself, for your partner, and heaven knows for your children uh, and for, for the people around you. Because again, you know, we think about the, the options that people have and the consequences of that. I just think that, that structure, truth, and relationships are your best way forward to survive it in a world that's kind of geared as Gear up to tear us apart, really. So I hope that helps. I hope that makes some sense to you, and I hope it helps the way that you feel. Yes, there'll be criticism. Yes, there'll be people that really don't agree with what I'm saying, and that's fine. I, I respect those views, and um, I have those issues with that. But what I always say to people is: think about your views, think about your behaviours what is your situation in life now based on what you think and feel and how you behave and if you're completely happy with that and your life is great then brilliant absolutely fantastic then good luck to you but if it's not then maybe it's just time to think about the decisions that you make the choices that you make particularly in your relationships and figure out if that can make things better and if it can then that's all for the good so thank you. I've taken up half an hour of your time. I hope that's been valuable for you. Listen, post some questions. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some thumbs down. Give me some hates. Whatever. Just fire away. But for those of you that, that, that want to take something for this and need to ask me any more questions or whatever, I'm hoping to be able to help people with this. And if I can, great. If I can't, that's great also. So Thank you so much for spending time listening. And uh, I'm on Facebook, Rick Cardwell, Rick Cardwell Counselling. Drop me a question anytime and I always do my best to get back to you. Thank you very much.